Hello, uh, we are team number one. My name is Jose Luis Estrada and my teammate Lonish Banner. Today we are working on a European bank data set. So the, uh, the purpose of this data set is to come up with a strategy for, uh, for marketing purposes. And so the marketing campaigns is based on phone calls and uh, this data set, it was uh, uh, gathered from May 2008 to November 2010. And, um, and yeah, so we're using uh, Python in order to analyze this data. So first of all, uh, we, we, have, uh, uh, we have imported our data set. Again, here's like our, our, uh, all the packages that we're using on, the, on this, on this uh, data analysis. But as you can see, we have uh, 17 columns, which 17 variables, and we have 45,211 rows, with all, which were all the observations uh, gathered in this, anal in, in this uh, data set. So the data, so in order to understand what type of, ty what type of variables we were uh, working with, uh, we ran this piece of code to understand we were ch uh, which of them were uh, objects, which were, were numeric, and to see in the future whether we have to make any changes or we can uh, uh, move forward. So, uh, so in order to understand our data set, we had to better our data set. We had to figure out if we were if there were any missing values, and we identified that three of our variables had missing uh, values. So, in order to address uh, this issue, we actually replaced uh, the median for the age since was one of only the only numeric uh, uh, variable that we had missing values. And for default and contact, we actually eliminated the rows because there was no uh, way we can uh, gather that information. So like there was like, there were just uh, a few uh, rows that we had to uh, sacrifice. So we, we eliminated them. Excellent, thank you, Jose. So um, moving forward, this is re really where the analysis starts and uh, we're gonna try to model um, relationships to see what the, uh, to see if this marketing campaign is truly effective or not. And the, uh, the end goal is to see who made a deposit and who did not. Um, we can look at prior outcome as a method of uh, measurement or a variable. We can look at uh, other variables, for example, uh, you may ask, why didn't we include day or month or duration? Well, we did include duration, but why didn't we, for example, include day or month? Um, the simple reason being that uh, we're not interested in seasonality for this particular analysis, because again, everything ranges from 2008 to 2010. So it's kind of difficult for us to establish if something happened in February, was it in 2009, was it in 2008, or was it in 2010? So we're not particularly interested in seasonality here. We're, we're, our end goal is to determine if um, if in fact the consumer made a deposit or not, did the consumer subscribe to the campaign or not? So um, in so doing, um, as we progress through the analysis, we only decide to include the following columns uh, at first, and that is age, job, marital status, education, whether they defaulted or not, uh, balance, duration, campaign, prior outcome and deposit. Of course, again, we may not be using all of these variables to make this determination. And there are some interesting findings as we progress. For example, if we look at deposit by age in this newly constructed data set, we um, discreditize age by buckets or bins because there's so much data. Again, remember there's 45,000 rows of data. And so we have to kind of bucket everything into age groups. So what we have here is interestingly enough between the ages of 35 and 40, uh, we have the highest amount of deposits at 962, and you can see that highlighted by the maximum here. So 962 deposits were made, the highest amount between the ages of 35 and 40. However, that only accounts for 11% because there's a higher percent of those that did not deposit. And we can see some give or takes in these types of relationships between age ranges. All in all, though, what we're and we can dive deeper into this, but the end goal is to see what kind of um, was the campaign successful? And if so, can it be used to model a future campaign? We'll get to that as we progress. But all in all, as you can see here, 12% made deposits. That's 4,985. 
out of, um, if you add this up, we're, again, we're looking at over 45,000 customers. So a 12% subscription rate is fairly low. Um, and we can also uh, transform this data using aggregation, normalization, and so on and so forth. Um, and in this case, we're looking at different job categories and the summary statistics pertaining there too. So um, one interesting statistic here is that retired individuals have the highest bank balances of $1,963. You would expect management professionals to have higher amounts, but then again, those who retired probably saved more, and so they have a higher uh, higher balances in their portfolios. Um, and we can dissect this further. But again, um, as to who made the deposit or subscribed to the marketing campaign, we don't know yet. And we're going to get there. So um, we have the total for the averages across all jobs, and then of course the minimums and maximums. What's interesting here, real quick, is that there are a lot of negative balances. Um, again, this could have something to do with their overdrawn accounts, um, numerous reasons. Moving forward in the interest of getting to the um, bottom line here, if you will, is that we can also look, and this is really interesting because there's less to slice and dice and dissect here, and we want to look at the same summary statistics, only this time by marital status. And um, here we see that uh, married couples actually deposited um, not deposited, my apologies, have a higher bank balance on average than the rest of the categories, more so than divorced or single. However, that being said, what's interesting to note here is that uh, those that were single actually deposited now, we're talking about deposits, more than those uh, that were married. So again, this all depends on the size of the respective um, uh, aggregate uh, or category. So Again, we don't have any actionable insights yet. We're just noticing some patterns and moving on to the next portion where we're going to analyze and visualize this data. Uh, we'll, we'll see the following. And um, so again, we can look at the average by age um, and that's the average age in the data set is 40, roughly 40 years old. Their average balance is $1,363.99. And now we're looking at the duration of the marketing campaign. We want to see how long um, each attempt was made for. And on, on average, we're looking at roughly 258 seconds. So what this looks like visually, it is a fairly normally distributed data set. And um, as you can see here, this is the age of the data set and it's roughly 40 years old. Uh, one interesting uh, pattern here is that we have outliers and we want to measure are those outliers significant? Are we interested in a data set that is sensitive or resistant to outliers? So we do a side-by-side -side comparison. We determine that the average age of the outliers is 76.8 years old. We take out the outliers and henceforth notice that really it is of no, I would like to say statistical significance, but in actuality, no material significance, whether we include the outliers or not, because we're looking at a very small difference, for example, um, if you're, you know, the mean with the outliers and without the outliers is only a difference of 0.37 and so on and so forth. There's really not much of a difference. So we can also look at age distribution in this uh, accompanying histogram. We're noticing the same pattern again, age 40, anything from age 35 to 40, as we've seen previously, is really the middle, uh, the mean of the data. And this is after we've smoothed it out, as Jose has mentioned previously, uh, in our pre-processing stage. Um, we smoothed out age, just as a quick recap, using the median. So um, the median age was 39. And so whether we did it by the mean or the median was only off by one. There was no uh, big consequence here. And so now we can look at the balance uh, distribution of clients. And again, we're noticing a lot of uh, balances here that are lower than zero. So there are a lot of negative balances overall. But again, this is a very large data set. Moving on, we can look at age and by campaign, uh, this uh, horizontal bar plot. And again, it's no surprise that those that are age 40 have the highest um, outreach. So what does this all mean? How do we tie this in? We wanna see which relationship is robust or sturdy for this model. So in order to do so, we have to construct a, there's numerous ways to, numerous ways to do this. One way is to, um, 
do a multiple regression table and go straight to the linear regression and um, you know establish each variable relationship one piece at a time. But that would be like playing a guessing game, if you will. So to make things easier, we do it holistically, all in one shot. So we create a pairwise plot. And from a visual standpoint, from first glance, it's very difficult to kind of model any kind of significant relationship here. Nothing seems to tell us one way or the other. Is, this, is there a negative relationship between each variable or a positive one? So for this reason, we create a heat map. And this heat map tells us that precisely there's really only one significant relationship, and that being at point four between deposit and duration. So what we can say is, for uh, moderately speaking, as duration increases, deposit increases as well. But that only really explains at a correlation coefficient of 0.4, we times it against itself. We're looking at 6.16. So that only explains about 16% of the variability in the data set. So for this reason, we decided that the linear regression model as it stands, only looking at one significant, maybe moderate at best relationship between deposit and duration. So is not the best model to go with. Jose will explain why in just a second, but let me wrap up by saying that, yes, if you increase the duration of the phone call or the contact attempt in general, you, you can get some degree of deposits going forward in a positive direction. But again, what does that tell, tell us at the end of the day? Jose, please take it away. Okay. So in order to uh, just... Um... To continue with the analysis, since we have our our hard to dependent variable, which is uh, which was a deposit, whether we did deposit or not, so we had to go use, uh, to use a logistic regression analysis in order to uh, to understand what were some of the behaviors of our clients. So before, uh, in order to do this, we had to uh, create uh, dummy variables in order to uh, for for the categorical uh, categorical uh, variables, in order to the, to help the algorithm understand our data set. So in, instead of having just one column for jobs, we actually divided them into job admin, job blue collar, entrepreneur, etc. And the reason is because we were going to have a matrix, and it's, it's going to be a numbers. So instead of having the just uh, the name of the of the job type, it was going to the the, the values in the cells are going to show one or zeros, and one means that the value it's true that this information in the column is true, and zero it is not true. So, in order to continue with this uh, with this test or with this uh, algorithm, we had to create uh, the um, data uh, train test and test test, and in order to identify what was the accuracy of our model and. And, and after that, we actually wanted to reduce the number of variables that we currently have uh, so here in the, uh, with the dominant variables. So the recursive future elimination helped us understand which of these variables were more significant into their model. So if you look at this, like you're saying like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So like the first, the, you have to count seven variables in order to understand which one is true. And here we did that, and we considered all these values manually and that were significant into their model. And after doing that, we created a logistic uh, regression analysis. So as you can see in the logistic regression analysis, we see all the, all the, um, the values that the RHP uh, method help us uh, get. And then we can see that p-values are very small so which means that all of these variables are significant into the final model so we're good to go so we don't have to make any reiteration so if we tested this uh this model and the accuracy of logistic regression classifier and tested was of 87 percent and we actually proved this with a confusion matrix where we had a total of 10,497 accurate results which were uh, the four, uh, this uh, this value right here and this value right here, and we have um, and we have a one one thousand five hundred nineteen uh, not accurate. So which were the values right here and right here? So which going back into uh, what I said, it was like it would have an eighty percent uh, accuracy in the test. So at the end of the day, uh, our 
the marketing the marketing team will, can target these variables for the next um, for, for the next for the next marketing um, campaign. Uh, so thank you for listening to us, and hope we have a good day. Thank you very much, Professor.